Welcome to Cycles TV. This session of the Market Cycles Report is intended exclusively to provide information and education to help individuals better understand cycles and the markets. However, this information is not to be construed as professional advice as to the buying and selling of securities. In no event does the host express any opinion with respect to or make recommendations regarding the purchase or sale of any particular investment instrument. There is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. Buying or selling decisions are solely within the personal discretion of each individual. And now, enjoy the show. Here is your host. Welcome to the foundation for the study of cycles. Yeah, my name is Lars Fontine. I'm happy to be here again. We are live this week. Um, I'm up and healthy, so uh, excuse for last week's delay. But today we are back with some cycle analysis. Uh, hi, Edward. Um, thanks for joining. As always, I will take the time to answer your questions at least at the end of this session. So feel free to drop them in during your uh, show. Um, and I will get back to the latest at the end. Before we come up to the Q&A session today, I want to dedicate um, this session of the first 20 minutes to review our community ideas. So the cycle analysis ideas with, which have been shared public um, by our members, our community with the cycle analyzer. And I think we can learn from reviewing also not only the analysts I would provide you to you from the analysis colleagues, members uh, out of the community put out to the public. So I will just switch to the public ideas section. I will then open up some community ideas which they have posted and I want to discuss uh, maybe what I think about their shared ideas, not because there is a wrong or right way, there are different ways. And I think we can learn from a cycle analysis which has been prepared by others and just comment and discuss on that. So that's the key topic for this week's cycle analysis. As said, let's at least uh, pick 20 minutes to focus on public ideas. And then at the end, as always, I will get back to your questions. So what is the public ideas section? So first, if you are not aware of that, in the cycle analyzer um, application we provide, there is this, um, uh, you can see it here, the, the domain where you will find that um, is the app.cycles.org, so the application, and then you will find this um, tab which is called ideas. And that's where everyone, everyone out of the community is able to post your cyclic analysis ideas you think are worth sharing with the community and then for sure engage with others like we see here at the bottom. So this is also meant to propose some comment on that. And in the future, we will also extend that to have a discussion forum, but not just text-based, also cycle analysis based. So this is public. Thanks everyone for already making use of that. So I would always recommend browse it weekly, daily. Um, there are already colleagues out there who share the analysis. So I will just start from the upper left. There's no priority now in, in picking this or the other analysis. It's just the latest one, which has been posted here um, by Florian um, yesterday, right? Yeah, on Sunday. So this was posted on Sunday by Florian related to Tesla. So let's review this analysis and have a look at that analysis here all together. Just organize the screen here. So that's the Tesla daily cycle study, which was provided by Florian, which he picked here. What I really like, you also always have the option to add some comments, not only the um, the outcome here of the analysis. So here Florian provided a key finding. So Tesla have been in a sustained downtrend for the past few months. Expected continuation of the downtrend based on the current cycle analysis, the downtrend in Tesla stock is expected to continue through October and even more. You can read this on your own. So let's see what the cycle analysis Florian Pictier shows us. So the standard 
configuration used around 800 daily bars now going back into the year of 2020 uh, for the horizon of the analysis and we see the uh, spectrum here at the bottom which shows two clear peaks for the cycle with a length of 106 days and the second cycle of 202 days uh, which I think they are obvious to pick we don't need any guidance uh, to assist here which cycles to pick those so this is a nice spectrum yeah you always will see different um, types of spectrum but this spectrum here I think it's clear why Florian also picked these two cycles here for the analysis. So you, we can see that the one with 106 and 202 trading days have been selected at cycles. And what I really like, so just following the standard guidance, I think everything is the same as I would do here. Yeah, picking the most dominant cycles which show up in the spectrum and not only from the visual shape. Also, you see we have a very high Bartels score, so it's a configuration from scientific uh, measurements that these cycles are also statistically significant in that data set and they have a high strength so it seems that they have a high relation to price movements so correct pick of these cycles and second when I just look at the the not the mathematic correlation but the correlation in regards to time yeah you, you always are aware of that we're using the cycle analysis for time-based projection of a possible top or bottom or change in trend yeah, to the upside or to the downside in regards to the timing. So we don't use the cycle or the composite which is shown here to project price targets. We use it to see if we have an alignment between turns of the composite cycle and the real underlying price cycle or series here, which in that case I think we have a very nice and perfect fit between the price key turning points and the cycle model turning points where we see that almost every um, turn in the cycling model yeah, like seen here so key top uh, then interim cycle key bottom here key top here interim low interim top here next low is aligned here and key high aligned here key low here key interim top here interim low here and then a key point at that point in time so if you just review the past 10 10 changes in trend in the tesla price series they match more or less perfectly in regards to time just following two dominant cycles so i think this gives a high correlation in regards to timing correlation not the mathematical correlation score that we have a great composite model and if you follow that composite model which was shown just just yesterday um, it shows that this short-term downtrend which is projected by this composite based on this cycle now continues into um, October and that's why Florian you made the assumption or conclusion yeah, that we could see a continuous daily downward movement at, at least during the period of September yeah, so the current month shows from the daily cycle analysis continuous downward cyclic adjustment into October. However, and I think this is uh, what I really also like from your analysis you shared here, you made reference to the um, to the weekly series. Yeah, so you also made at least a comment to the weekly cycle series, which seems to stay on the bullish perspective so I, I will not go into the, the depth here but I think that's that's the kind of perfect um, basic procedure here what you apply to Tesla I would do exactly the same pick these cycles and I think it's valid and thanks for sharing I think these are the cycle studies we all could share um, because uh, it, it shows us the basic underlying projection using the daily cycles model here um, so that's Tesla the only side note I would make is you always need to be careful if you analyze individual stocks. Yeah, because analyzing individual stocks has always the risk that um, you might or, or you might have a price series with high fluctuation, which is related to some special um, 
special purposes which which are not really the root cause of cycles. So, um, for example, if the price of the Tesla um, a company is more related to public announcements um, Elon Musk is maybe doing on Twitter, um, I think, and that impact would have more impact on the price of Tesla than any fundamental or maybe cyclic uh, movement behind, then we have a lot of noise which is impacting the, the individual stock price. And this would always make it hard for cycle analysis to find the underlying cycles. So um, I think, and, and Tesla is one of these where at least my experience is you need to be careful with applying this just blindly without taking this into account. I think the two cycles found here are very strong, very dominant. So I would, I would, argue you can continue or you can follow that analysis. However, at least my experience, Tesla is highly driven by individual news announcements, which have a high fluctuation and impact on the price. And I think this would not be related to cycles. So this could impact this analysis at any given point in time, at least related to Tesla. And you always need to have this discussion if you analyze individual assets, which is not the problem if you analyze bigger indices in general. But yeah, that's it for that analysis. For So thanks for sharing it with the community. Um, let's move on um, uh, to another study. And yeah, just, just because I looked up, let's start from the end. I think there was also a study here on silver futures. Yeah, um, this was shared by Kiwi. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, so let's open that and bring this up. Uh, yeah, so this is a little bit an older study. So this was at the end of June. So you shared this at the end of June uh, on the silver futures. Um, at the at the conclusion at the end of June with that analysis was, um, let's even zoom in here, close to a bottom, yeah, posted uh, at the end of June in this public community. So let's review um, that finding here. So we see by the dark blue data series, the exact point when this was posted, so we can even zoom in. So this was the point in time uh, when this analysis was posted. Yeah, so the, let's check the date. So 23rd of June, um, and we can even disable the light blue data. So this was uh, the point where you shared this analysis. Um, there have been some cycles which indicated a possible bottom at that point in time. We also use the cyclic RSI indicator, which would have has confirmed at the 23rd of June, a possible bottom. I will now even enable the out of sample data. Yeah, and just after that point, uh, you, you pick the low. So just in, in short terms, um, you have been right in calling to the day, to the day, not for the year, but at least this is an interim low, which has been shown up by your cycle analysis, and it was up to the point. So, and I think this shows also the power of the community. Um, and I think there was a reason to publish this cycle analysis. So let's get back to what cycles have been picked here and, and why at that point in time. So uh, three cycles have been picked for that analysis. And we, we, we can even have a look at that. So let's um, a little bit clean up the screen first. So I don't want to have the energy model and I don't want to see the harmonics. So let's have a clear view on the uh, spectrum first here. So and yeah, it's a composite model out of three cycles, uh, 101 days. So this is a key peak which shows in the spectrum here to the uh, lower left, I, I think you can see it. This is uh, a nice peak in the spectrum. It also shows up um, as um, highly ranked cycle. Then the second cycle you picked here 
is this one with a length of 216 um, days, yeah, and then the, uh, I think the, which cycle did you pick? Uh, the 71, yeah, that's this peak here, the third cycle, um, 71. And by the way, these are the three cycles which also have been selected by our yeah, AI or the computer guided support, which cycles to pick. So this cycle has been ranked number one, yeah, as, as a guideline to use in a composite model. Um, this has been ranked second, ranked third. So even if you would have not any clue which cycles to pick, just pick one, two, three, which is the composite model. Or I think if you look at the spectrum, there's also a clear reason because these three peaks stand out in the spectrum. So I think there's a clear reason to pick them. They have a green triangle, they have high strength, so even if you know what to do, these are the key cycles out of the spectrum to pick them here. So I think absolutely valid to pick these three cycles for a projection at that given point in time. And then what I always recommend, just from a visual perspective, as I just also explained it on the Tesla series, you need to validate if the key turns of that composite in the past correlate to key changes in trend of the underlying price series, which if you just look, I mean, this is an interesting composite because it shows you clearly some key possible tops yeah, in the underlying price series. For example, that's the reading I would take out of that analysis. So um, let's maybe highlight that. So here at that point in time, I think we have a key top of the composite cycle and we also have a key top yeah, in the uh, price series. The second time we had this key top from the composite is here, where we also have a key top in, in the price series. The third time we have that in the composite model is here, where we also have a key reversal in the underlying price series. We, the third time is here, yeah, which also correlates then to that. Um, that's not a key top, so it, it correlates not to this one, but um, if you do then do the same for the key bottoms. So let's check them. One is here. So we have the key turn here and maybe yeah, here and here. So it's related to this one and that one. So this is also fitting. Now, ah, well, we have the key turns. Um, oops, then we have it. Ah, here it's, yeah, it's, it's, you don't know where. So, um, but at least if, if you would say, okay, here we, which is correct, we can't identify one key turn here, but at least the, the bottoming area fits to that. Then we have the key bottoming from that cycle here, which is also correct. Um, and now we are looking to, and that's I think the reason why you published this analysis at that given point in time here. So this would indicate a key reversal also in um, silver futures. And zooming in, so um, still confirmation is out, at, at least short term, yes, um, this is the the low, yeah, at that given point in time. So after that point in date, we point of time, we, we didn't move lower. I mean, we, we, reach, we reached um, that point here, but yeah, we moved sideways with some, some wiggles. So looking at the current projection, and I think this is where we uh, need to look into is now the next possible top from that analysis, which is projected um, for end of October. I mean, I would now update this analysis based on new data. No? So this is a static analysis, which was done in June. So what I would do now, if, if maybe I look up this kind of public analysis, which I like is let's update this to the latest data. Um, and by the way, also the cyclic RSI confirmed the, the possible bottom here. So let's now move the end of the analysis yeah, to the latest um, data point. Or we have now two months of, of new data in here. So by that, we click on this uh, anchor button here. Yeah, and I would adjust the end of the analysis here to, to today, yeah, uh, where we have new data. So I switched the end of the analysis to that point. I will now click update the cycle calculation 
And now we have the updated uh, cyclic model in here. And we can see that two out of the three cycles are still there. I need to clean up again the harmonics uh, energy model out. So these two cycles are still there. Uh, so the, the projection which was done here in June, so still valid. So we still have the key low which was anyhow on the 23rd of June. So you projected this low here in real time, right on time. Um, and now the updated projection with the final two cycles, which are still valid. Um, we see that the RSI has already moved upwards, but there would be room to go. So from a technical cyclic analysis, there is still room to the upside and the silver futures. From a timing perspective, another upswing is still to be expected until yeah second half of October. So the original analysis is still valid. Yeah, it's still there, not changed. I think the longer term cycle slightly changed um, to 215. So I would add this cycle now into the mix. Um, but as we can see, it does not change the overall projection. Yeah, so still valid 23rd which and i like that you identified that point in time in real time and published it here and now i think there is room to go until october to the upside for the silver futures so so i just confirm what you've done here is more or less a similar standard approach what we provide to the community so thanks for posting that idea on the silver futures Okay, let's go back to the idea section and check out what is there. Um, yeah, maybe let's talk about NVIDIA. I mean, I think NVIDIA is also a closely watched asset. So let's check um, what was your analysis you shared here so following a daily model so this is a daily model here on nvidia we have we, we see here the the strong uptrend since october so anyhow from a cyclic perspective on short term this is uh, i think no short term cycle this is a strong uptrend since october here but anyhow um, the daily analysis of the cycles, but, but, but maybe that's important to take into, into consideration. If we use daily cycles and uh, we see these kind of strong, similar to a linear uptrend, um, I would first switch to the weekly series to see what this, the weekly cycles on um, NVIDIA tell, tell us here um, to set this strong daily uptrend into account. Um, but anyhow, that's just, just a comment, um, which, which you need to consider when you see this kind of, of chart. Um, okay, so let's see. F one, two, three, four cycles have been picked. Let's have a look at the spectrum. Okay, here I think we have a very complex and not so easy spectrum, which makes the cycle analysis for that example quite hard. So I think the, the other two examples I just commented on before this one have been clear spectrums, which, which also a clear indication which cycles to pick. This example now on, on NVIDIA, if we have a look at the spectrum here at the bottom, um, is a not so easy spectrum to choose cycles from. Um, let's, let's discuss why. So if we have a look at this spectrum here, you see first, we have one, two, three, four, even five bumps or peak in the spectrum around the same height or amplitude. So just checking of, of the high of th that peak in the spectrum, they, they, don't, they are not different to each other. We don't have one which ha with a high amplitude, yeah, which stands out of the spectrum. They have more or less the same low peak amplitude so therefore which one should we peak a uh, pick 
<laughs> peak, peak, which peak to pick? <laughs> That's the question. And just based on the amplitude we see, it's not easy because they all have a very low but similar amplitude in the spectrum. Mm, not so good. And that's especially not easy because we don't know what is the dominance cycle. That's the most, the most pressing question we always want to, find, want to answer. We don't want to identify 10 or 20 or 5 cycles and we don't know which is the driving force. Um, therefore, the, the shape of the, of the peak in the spectrum is important. And here we cannot make any decision because the high is the same. Second, if we then look at the how the shape in the spectrum is, it would quickly become clear that this spot, this spot, and this spot, these three ones are, are, are peaks in the spectrum. Yes, from a mathematical point of view, these are peaks where you can detect the, the real peak, but these are not cycles I would propose to pick because this is a very flat, flat plateau in, in the spectrum here. So it's not sharp. It's not really a sharp peak where it goes up and down in the spectrum. And even here you see the, the shoulder to the right is it's more or less flat plateau. So you don't know if this is the length or that here. So you could ignore these two peaks here. You could also ignore this this peak here. Even it, it is selected by the by the artificial guidance here as a possible cycle. But the to be honest, the only two cycles which could be used in the composite are these two ones here. So 81 and 102. But even though they share the same amplitude maybe of these cycles here. So if I just see this kind of spectrum, to be honest, I would not continue any cycle analysis on that asset class. Because the only cycle which seems to be valid, and maybe you remember my initial comment, is there seems to be a, a, a longer cycle which could not be uncovered because it seems this cycle is longer than 400 days. Yeah, So we don't really know where it will peak in that spectrum here. We would need to analyze a longer period. And this longer term cycle seems to be much more dominant than all these short term cycles which show up in that spectrum here. And in order to detect the longer term cycles, it's, it's not about detecting longer cycles on a daily time series we should switch to the weekly period. And I think then this cycle will, will become more visible. So that's the reading from this public analysis here. Even though you could now follow the, the ups and downs be between price and composite cycle model. But if I just spot this kind of spectrum um, with this shape here, I would completely not do any composite projection um, based on these cycles. I think we cannot trust the cycle analysis on its own. And that's often the case. We need to make decisions if, and, and you should not always just load up the cycle scanner and blindly follow a cycle analysis. Maybe that's also a good learning, therefore. Uh, thanks for, for sharing, um, Andrea. Um, just, just help me out. Uh, uh, I, yeah, it was public published by Andrea. Uh, Andrea, I, I see you also live in the chat section. Not, not sure if, if it's the same, uh, Andrea, but uh, many thanks for sharing because I think this is, you, you're doing absolutely right here with that, but I think the comments are also helpful in regards to how the spectrum looks like. Okay, that's my comment on the NVIDIA cycle study. And I think NVIDIA is what we're all looking for. So I would recommend do a weekly analysis first on NVIDIA and then maybe get back. So let's have maybe let's pick a last one. I think then we have talked about um, 30 minutes. Uh, maybe what's interesting here. Let's pick this commodity weekly series here. Just the second one. Uh, it's a mixture of three I mean, what you see here by the ideas, ideas, so there is the future line of demarcation. So the FLD concept is in, we have a cyclic con uh, composite model in, and we have the cyclic RSI. So, so I think that's what makes this public um, post interesting. And the recommendation or the outcome is more long-term short opportunities. That's maybe the reading of that analysis. So let's see how 
it reads or how I would comment this kind of analysis. Okay, so first it's a weekly series. So we have the sugar futures here in a weekly series and four cycles have been picked. And by the way, these four cycles are the same also our artificial support system would propose to pick. So let's therefore have a look at the spectrum first. Um, I think here what comes to be or what pops up from a visual perspective is that we see this clear peak um, for the cycle with the length of 306 weeks. Yeah, in that case, we're talking about weeks. So a 300 week cycle. I think there is no discussion about that. This cycle stands out from amplitude, from separation to the left, to the right. There is no other cycle with a similar amplitude seen in the spectrum. So the distance between to the next amplitude is a very high distance here. So uh, the Bartels score is also valid above 80 here in that sense. So I would call this the number one cycle or the most dominant cycle, which, which is absolutely valid to pick here in that case. That's fine. And that would be the same as I would do. So this cycle is, at least I can support that. Um, maybe the second cycle, which was used here, is with a length of 89. Let's let's check the spectrum. And here the spectrum gets a little bit tricky now, um, similar to what I've explained here. So we have lots of possible peaks here in, on the shorter range here. So I think from a long-term perspective, there is no second cycle with the, with the longer. Um, even there's no, no, no possible um, option to choose from. But if it comes to short term cycles, we have a we have a big group of possible cycles here. So the one which was chosen here or three have been chosen here out of that series. The first one is here seen in the spectrum. Let's zoom in with the length of 89. So um, I think I would agree and support that because from it has a high peak here. And it's an, this is a sharp peak, yeah? So it's clearly separated to the left and the right. So the, the left shoulder and right shoulder goes even down to zero in the spectrum, which is, which is the ideal scenario. So, and we have a green triangle has so high bar tail score. So 89 makes sense. Um, the other ones are then 71 and 53. So 71 and 53, yeah, and here where, where, to be honest, it would really be hard to decide between the 71 and 53. So, I mean, there are reasons from a technical perspective why these two have peaked. This has a high amplitude. This right shoulder is the best. So if there is any, in addition, these two are fine. My conclusion would be I would only go with these two cycles here. So the long-term cycle and the cycle with the length of 89. I would skip the other two with a length of 71 and 53. Um, so that's um, at least one way to look at it. Uh, what I would now would do next is to see if the projection would dramatically change if we use the four cycles, which are proposed here, or if we just reduce it to the, to the key two cycles um, at least I would spot also in that analysis. So I would deselect now these two short-term cycles, 53 and 71 weeks. And please, we need to look out if this projection here to the right into the future will dramatically change or not. I don't know yet, but let's check this. If I deselect the first short-term cycle, I will activate on, off, on, off. So there's no big change in regards to the future projection area. Let's do the same now with the second cycle, 71. It's on, off, on, off. So I think there's also no big change in the basic projections if you use these two cycles or not. So it, the picture becomes even more cleaner, to be honest. So the key projection is, even if you use these two cycles, is that it seems to be a key top, which we have seen here in May, yeah? And um, longer correction phase now in place from a long-term perspective. We just follow that analysis until 2024. So I think the full next year 
or, or this year into 2024 seems to be a continuation of yeah more shorting opportunities maybe showing up in sugar and by the way that's also supported by the cyclic rsi i mean the key top is confirmed here from the technical standpoint and if you look at the shape where we are there is also from the technical cyclical perspective room to go before at least another maybe possible bullish interim scenario might be triggered so that would be my reading from that analysis and i think it's also maybe interesting so i would i would come to the same conclusion more long-term short opportunities at hand i would just recommend to deselect two out of the four cycles which you have used and by the way make the historical analysis and the future projection even more cleaner without a key change so the if you can reduce the amount of cycles in your composite projection model the better it will be and even the better it will be if the key turns will not change so a cycle model does not become better the more cycles you combine in, into a composite model and even though if you combine more and more cycles and then the projection just moves around with with different projection areas then you should not trust it so if you can reduce your key composite model down to a maximum of three cycles and then even the fourth and fifth cycle would not alter your projection then i think you have a good model and if you ex can explain it by key peaks from the spectrum that's then um the way to go okay that's it reviewing this uh, third example from um or fourth example even from the community and I would re even, even recommend everyone, uh, please do more public sharing of your cycle analysis. I think this helps us all to spot the interesting situations and points in time um, if we find something in cycle analysis. And we want this to become a community. This is not just a, a, a single analysis shared here with the public. So it's public. So even if you're not a member, make use of visiting the public idea section. And I think it will be also a place for inspiration. Maybe even if you don't agree to a cycle analysis, maybe it inspires you to do your own cycle analysis on the asset shared there. Okay, that's it for the key part. Oh, I even spent a lot of time um, on, on commenting on that. I hope it helps you, but I will now switch to the live chat section and I'm happy to pick up some questions. So please give me some time to follow up what's in the chat area. Um, okay, um, let me, I cannot follow all questions. So thanks for having this lively uh, uh, discussion um, anyhow. And um, Edward, I see you are well prepared again today. So I will get back to your prepared questions you just throw in at the beginning of the session. Let me just please pick up something which is related to the discussion here, maybe. Um, maybe a um, good idea or at least a topic you brought up, Cobain, um, weekly and daily cycles. Is it possible to aggregate them to get one combined cycle? So uh, from a, just a tooling or technical perspective, no, we, we don't have a button where you combine uh, the cycles and see it as one model. But from an approach perspective, I would absolutely support that. You, you always need to have both cycle methods at hand. So start with daily or weekly, that doesn't matter. But then you should have both cycle models um, um, in view so and then i mean the, the idea is also cobain also to look for cycles within cycles so you want to find the turning points of the daily cycles model when it turns back into the direction of the weekly model i think that and, and if this is in agreement with the cyclic tuned rsi technical indicator these are more or less at least the perfect setups i'm looking for so um if weekly and daily are in disagreement you never know what is the more dominant cycle 
So th there could be different configurations and outcomes. So a disagreement of weekly and daily is not easy to read, or at least you need then the technical analysis to get a clue out of long and short term cycles and disagreement. The best situation is look when the short term cycle turns back into the direction of the long term cycle. So if long term is pointing down and you have a current upswing cycle, which seems to come to an end and turning into the direction of the downtrend of the long term cycle, then look at the technical indicator to fine tune maybe the entry of a short trade or the other way around. Um, we are working on combining this into an aggregated cycle model from the cycle scanner tooling perspective, Cobain. So from a technical perspective, I see your point and we will improve on that so that you can combine different cycle models on one view. So maybe have the, view, view, the weekly also in view of the daily. There are possibilities already, yet it's not, not easy and we, we, we need to make it more easy to do. But at least commenting on your on your comment. Um, um, so maybe Tony can all subscribers store in ideas or only premium. No, everyone can save and publish ideas. So the ideas section is open to any member. You just need to be a, a, a member. So, but it's not limited to premium. So I think that's and that's what we want to propose. So I mean, you, you can just do a cycle analysis with the feature set you have, but publishing, storing ideas is available to every member. And even the discussion of these ideas is open to everyone. Even, even the section is open to the public. So we really want to improve the public discussion and, and uh, want to support the usage for every member. You don't need to be a premium member for that, Tony. Okay. Um, Jim, I think you commented on the sugar for last 50 years shows it 75 plus or minus dominant cycle. Now 71 today. So for short term timing has worked well. I mean, that's, that's a key statement I like in your comment here because you've also some knowledge of the long term cycle analysis. I, I just shared the, the analysis model. And if you know that from an historical point of view of the last 50 years, this uh, 71 week cycle worked. So I deselected it. Now, I mean, that's a great comment. But if you have more knowledge from historical analysis that this is a valid cycle, I agree that this is a reason to include that for a short term trading. I just deselected this as a proposed cycle in, in my analysis because on the, and what was the end of the analysis, 2008. So using just the last 20 years, um, it, there was not enough evidence to pick that cycle. But I, I totally agree with you, Jim, if, if you know about the part 50 years. So if you've added more historical data to the analysis and you know that the 71 cycle from past analysis is working, that's another reason for sure to include it. And that's the mixture or the, then it, that's the differentiation when, when to put more historical data into the cycle scanner analysis. It helps you to identify the length of the cycle, which might be valid over a longer period. So 71 weeks would be valid from an historical point of view and the short term analysis. So then taking only a shorter amount of data points to get the current phase of that cycle. So you know from an historical analysis, th this length is valid. And then you can squeeze down the period just to use a shorter amount because for the projection, you are interested in the current phase of that cycle, not over the average about the past 50 years, maybe just the 20 years are enough to give you the right amount of current phase. And then in addition, even if it's not dominant in the spectrum, because you have squeezed the period to a smaller a time period, you know, from the longer period, you, you still can trust it and select it in the composite model. So Jim, thanks for bringing this to our attention. Also, this is what, what I ignored in the comments I did. Okay, then um, maybe William, um, you also brought this up. Is cycle analysis best for commodity 
ETFs or stock stock indices. What's your experienced opinion? Is one asset class clearly the best for cycles? Um, so I think it is a valid question. You should always ask yourself before trusting the, the cycle analysis, um, could this asset or price series be valid for cycle analysis? So um, the, the, the worst, let's start with the bottom, the worst cycle analysis is done for individual stocks. So I, I, I first I would try to avoid doing individual cycle analysis for stocks. Other than you know why you apply cycle analysis for a specific stock. So for example, I used Apple as a key proxy for the tech sector, but there are reasons to pick Apple. If you just go on smaller stocks, cycle analysis would not work. So the, the, the worst um, scenario is using individual stocks. Let's start with that. And using global stock indices is the best asset class where cycles work in, in my experience. Yeah? Because, and, and the explanation, at least from my experience, is the, the global stock market indices bundle the, the most amount of yeah, cyclic, cyclic root cause, which I don't know what, what the real root cause is, but there seems to be cyclic behavior, which is best expressed and analyzed in global stock market indices. Yeah, so that's worst and best class. Commodities is then a little bit in between because with commodities, and it depends then on which commodity you focus, um, com if, if there's just a small amount um, of volume or, or just a small range of interested uh, uh, traders for a specific commodity, then I would avoid it. If it's a broad commodity like gold, silver, I think then, then it works because this is global of global interest and price fluctuations are based then on, on, a, on a global um, um, big audience which is interested in these commodities. So for commodities, you need to have the um, um, support of a huge diverse group of um, traders which trade that commodity. If it's just very reduced volume and reduced set of traders which are interested in that community, I would not use it for cycle analysis. So ETFs is, I would, I would see it similar to stock market indices. ETFs is just then a different measurement on specific stock indices. So if you have, and maybe, but better would be if you have a real in indice instead of using the ETF. So if you have an index, that's even better. If you don't find the index or have ETF for that asset group, maybe then use the ETF. But if the ETF is just then representing a small group of sub stocks, then it's similar to analyzing a stock and then don't use the ETF because maybe there's not enough volume in that ETF. So I hope William that gives at least some guidance on, on where to use and maybe where not to use. Um, your um, maybe Edward, uh, coming back to your prepared questions, um, and I think you're going more de into the, the de depth of the cycle analysis uh, a scanner here. So the qualitative differences between the fit versus nearest composite cycle nominal fit model. Um, yeah, let me, okay, let's, we, we need to open an example on that. I try to make it short to not go into um, uh, really the, the applications, but uh, let me pull up an example. Uh, so I need to switch my screen here. Let's put up an example here uh, and explain also to the audience about your, your question. So there are different or uh, different ways how to create composite forecast and you are referring here to the advanced model where we can create an auto composite um, model uh, which which can be done which is the nominal model um, maybe to read it even better which is preset in the setting so nominal cycle nearest fit that's what the abbreviation stands for nominal cycle nearest fit where you need to present 
possible cycle length from a nominal cycle model you want to detect and where these cycles are coming from you need to define initially. So the set here is the standard Hearst series for daily Hearst model. So Hearst looks for a nominal cycle of 376 days, 188 days, 94 days and so first defined by the Hearst nominal model. You can use other models as you like or even if you go to intraday you need to change that. So if you activate this feature here you um, the cyclic analyzer will present you with an auto composite feature where you can switch between two different auto composite models. The first one is related to the nearest composite um, um, nearest co nearest cycle nearest composite nearest fit model by the defined cycles in the settings. If I activate this this now automatically builds a composite as you see here based on the selected cycles which are close to the nominal model you have put in the settings here. So it will only pick cycles which are very closely related to um, that model you see here on the screen. So only cycles which have a relation to these cycles will be selected in that composite. So the reason why these cycles have been selected is they more or less fall into the into the defined ones. So and that's 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 the reason, uh, Edward, because they are picked. There's no correlation, nothing. They they just fit to the first model here. The second one you you could select here is the oops here the the fit model, which will show, or which has a different different approach here how to select the cycles. This fit model here now takes all possible cycle combinations into account. So you, you could combine the possible composite model with thousand different combinations. I mean this is now statistic or co co combinations. Um, I think you can there are millions of possible combinations to combine these detected cycles in one way or the other. What the algorithm, the fit algorithm is doing, it's testing all possible com um, composite models here based on selecting these two, these four, these five cycles and it's then calculating a theoretical profitability score if you would trade this cyclic model. So it's just selling at the tops and buying at the bottoms and then it's just checking how the profitability if you would execute that trading model against that composite what is the profitability of that composite cycle model and it then will present you as an outcome with the selected cycles with the highest profitability if you would have traded that composite model. So it's a complete different approach. So there are two methods implemented which give you an auto composite so you can switch your head off, you don't need to think about it computer will show you a possible composite. The first one is defined by the nominal model you define in the settings. Hearst model is in there as standard and it will then show you the cycles which have been detected which are the most closest to the nominal cycles you have defined. The second model is just run a profitability back test on all possible combinations which could be there and then show me the best combination. Edward, that's, that's it related to your our first question. I hope that helps at least as a quick answer. Um, yeah, just on the API, ju just in general. You, you, you all know that the underlying engine for you know, the cycle analyzer is also what we use at the foundation put into an API-ish technology. So at some point or the other we will open that API also to yeah, our, our membership base to make use of that. But for now we, we really don't want to go into the API method now. We are currently we are improving the features and the usage of the cycle analyzer before we continue providing more support and extended features to the API. And that's the reason Edward why I'm not responding. So please, the API is the underlying technology. Opening that technology up is a little bit skipped on our roadmap um, as we want to improve the basic features first.
Um, so in general, if out of the community is somebody is aware of um, there are third party usage of that AP, also my background, if you're following the when to trade, but this is closed and all moved into the foundation now. So if you have other accounts, you don't need to do anything. They will automatically be moved. So don't, don't be afraid of that. Um, you don't need to um, um, upgrade anything. Um, so maybe on Yeah, smoothing is a topic on its own, Edward, to be honest. Um, what I would propose if you are interested in different approaches to smoothing, uh, what we have implemented already is uh, not only smoothing, also some detrending filters, which are available as a pre-processing mechanism here. W the research shows that the Hed Hodrick Prescott filter, the HP filter, is still the best used as pre-processing, but you could also select different other smoothing or detrending algorithms, and you could activate some additional sig signal smoothing like a zavitsky golai filter. So within in these pre-processing settings, you can switch what smoothing and detrending algorithms should be used. You can also completely deselect it. So if you don't want to apply any pre-processing, so you won't use detrending, you don't want to smooth the input, just deactivate the signal smoothing and the detrending, check update. And I would always also recommend it to see if there's a different outcome in cycle analysis if you alter the pre-processing routines. So as said, in, in standard setting, you don't need to deal with it. Odrick Prescott filter is always used as a standard detrending algorithm, and then no additional smoothing is applied. But for sure, play with these configurations. But I think the then you have a little bit more understanding about why picking this pre-processing versus the other uh, pre-processing. So that's the reason the standard setting is still the best I would recommend. Go with the Odrick Prescott filter as detrending. A detrending is important, so I would always recommend to detrend the data. Cycles are about detrending the long-term model. Otherwise, it's a wrong cycle analysis. Smoothing on its own is not as important as at least that's the finding. Smoothing will just sort out the mess on very short-term circles. So, so smoothing will just help you out here in, in, the, in the shorter term cycles where you have a lot of peak. If, if you're really interested in better short term cycles detection, then activate smoothing. As I always try to find the most dominant cycles more on, on, on the right hand side of the spectrum, then smoothing will not really improve the results if, if we add smoothing. So that's at least a short comment on your questions. Okay, we are running for an hour. My God, it seems to never end. But um, yeah, um, I hope um, again, I tried to make it a combination of some cycle analysis, how you do it today, taking our attention to what you shared. So uh, I really want to em emphasize, uh, share your analysis with the community. We can discuss it here. Also make a reference to a public analysis in the chat or in the questions related to a video, I would put this up here in the video for public discussion. Um, and second, I hope again, you use the uh, time to dig into some real questions. That's why we are here. That's why I really pay attention to your live questions as always every week, as long as I can, can do it here. I want to dedicate some time to that. That's it for today. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope you have been inspired by something. Maybe some comments uh, gave you some new areas on cycle analysis. That's why we are here. That's why I always want to use the chance and opportunity to meet with you. Thanks for being live with me. Please get back next week, same time, same time, same place, next Monday, Monday, at least from today, nothing is scheduled. So I'm planning to be here next week, same time, same place. And I'm happy to meet you again.